I already survived 100 days as Venom, defeating the evil Dr. Drake and shutting down his plan to turn everyone into zombies. But now the challenge was to survive another 100 days as Eddie Brock and Venom. On day 101, Eddie was called by his boss to travel to another city nearby to cover a story about a killer on the loose. Sounds creepy. We should go. We told Anne and she wanted to come with us. No, Anne. It'll be too dangerous. I'm coming. She stared Eddie down, but he just stared her down right back. Finally, he threw his hands into the air. Fine. She jumped up and down for joy, then gave Eddie a kiss on the cheek. His face got all red. What's wrong with your face, Eddie? Nothing. We gathered some supplies. Eddie grabbed his camera, and grabbed some flares, and I grabbed some chocolate before heading out. We all took one last look at the statue. It's okay, Eddie. Venom will protect us if anything goes wrong. We'll be fine. We all took off on his motorcycle and made our way to the city. We drove through towns and something called a forest. It was pretty cool, but I thought the trees looked funny. We finally made it to the edge of the city where a bridge stood. It seemed to be blocked off and there was graffiti everywhere. Weird. We looked around when all of a sudden some crooks popped out. Their leader was wearing a suit and held a weapon which seemed to glow. I morphed into my venom form and started to snack on the crooks. Yeah, what is that? The leader pointed his weapon at me and it shot electricity. Ouch! The force knocked us back off the bridge, then everything went dark. On day 102, we woke up under the bridge. I felt so weak and Eddie seemed pretty banged up. We managed to pick ourselves up and dust ourselves off, but then I realized my hearts were down to just three again. What in the world? I tried to take form and I was the same size as before, just with less hearts. That weapon had quite the kick to it. You got that right, buddy. We looked around and didn't see the bike or... Anne! We looked around frantically but couldn't see her anywhere. Venom, we need to find her. We went deeper into the city. It seemed abandoned and some of the buildings even seemed like they had been blown up. Ah! We saw a kid down an alleyway. He screamed and then he ran into a store. Hey, we won't hurt you. I let Eddie take form and he ran over to the door. A woman was locking the door. No, please. We've been robbed and our friend has been kidnapped. She looked at us and then unlocked the door. She offered us some food and we told her about Anne. She said that she saw a woman being dragged away by some crooks a few hours before. That must have been her. Where were they taking her? Probably to Cletus Cassidy. He is basically running the whole city now. Those crooks work for him. This was really bad. Eddie was supposed to work on a story on Cletus and now he had Anne. It's okay, Eddie. We will find Anne. I promise. The nice lady, whose name we learned was Julie, and her son, Chris, gave us some food and new clothes. Now we just needed a safe place to stay. On day 103, we went sneaking through the city to find a safe place to stay. We found an abandoned building that looked like it used to be a factory. This will do. We took some materials from some rubble to make some improvements. We patched up some walls and even made a secret door to get in. Not half bad. All of a sudden, we heard a loud crash outside. We peeked out the window and saw some crooks trying to break into a restaurant across the street. They were different from the ones we saw on day 101 and had regular weapons instead of the ones that shot lightning. We ran outside to help. I'd leave that alone if I were you. The crooks turned around, brandishing their knives. Eddie let me morph and we attacked. Within no time, the crooks were gone and in my stomach. Good thing, I was getting hungry. I felt myself grow and my hearts increased. Nice, looks like I can get my health back and I'm taller now. Good thing we live in a place with high ceilings. We headed back to the factory to get settled in for the night. We also took a little bit of time to make Eddie his own room. Then before bed, we made a nice little corner for Anne. We'll find you, Anne. We promise. On days 104 to 105, we went out to gather more supplies for the factory. We didn't know how many people were still in the city, but we decided that the factory would be a good refuge for people. We were out looking for some sort of food when we saw the crooks from day one. I took Venom form. Give us Anne back! We charged at them, and they screamed in terror. We ate all of them except one. We held him down. Tell us where you took Anne! I don't know, man. We just drop off the cargo at the abandoned bakery, but nobody stays there. They must have taken her somewhere else. All of a sudden, he slashed me with a knife, dealing a good amount of damage. He started to run away. I hurried and grabbed him, eating him before he could get any farther. Venom. I know, Eddie. We need to get to that bakery. On days 106 to 108, we stopped at the factory before heading over to the bakery. We had taken the knives from the crooks, so we had extra weapons, but we grabbed a crowbar and some other things, just in case. 
A crowbar? I think we're gonna need some stronger weapons. Why do we need weapons when we have me, a super-powered symbiote? Well, you haven't been all that much help, Venom. You let him get away with Anne. Eddie was mad? At me? I wasn't the one who took Anne. I morphed my arm out and punched Eddie in the face. Ouch! What was that for? Stop being silly, Eddie. We will find Anne, so stop feeling sorry for yourself. Eddie rubbed at his now black eye. He seemed really angry, but then he sighed and nodded. You're right. Let's go kick some booty. On days 109 to 110, we snuck to the bakery. It was a fairly small city, so it wasn't too hard to find. There were a few guys outside, but they wouldn't be too hard to fight. We started toward the building when we saw a car pull up and a teenager get pushed out. Then a guy jumped out. He had crazy hair and a bright red suit on. He ushered the teenager into the bakery and started talking to the guys at the front. That must be Cletus Cassidy. I recognize him from the photos I've seen in the papers. He must have Anne. I took form and charged at him. He looked startled, but then his crooks started attacking me. I managed to dodge most of their attacks pretty well, which made the crooks nervous. I dealt with the crooks and went to corner Cletus. I saw the teen run out from the building, but then Cletus pulled out a sword and slashed at me. Ouch! It actually hurt and I took some damage. Part of my form detached as Cletus kept slashing at me. Venom, he's hurting you. We need to go. We ran away, part of my form still wiggling away on the pavement as we rounded a corner. I needed time to heal. I let Eddie take form. Hey. We saw the teenager from the car come down the opposite alleyway. Thanks for distracting them. I was able to get away. For sure, kid. What's your name? Zach. My whole family is gone. Can I stay with you? We led him back to the factory and set up a bed for him to sleep. We didn't find Anne, but we did save a kid. That felt good. On days 111 to 112, we made a nice little room for Zack. He really liked it and offered to help us find food. I've been living on the streets for a few years, and I know what places dump out good food. We'll have a feast in no time. We followed him to some dumpsters, and sure enough, there was lots of leftovers. We even found some chocolate. Why would anyone throw this away? We made some storage bins to put the food in, as well as a small kitchen. It wasn't amazing, but it was good enough for now. Hey, thanks, Zack. We couldn't have done this without you. No problem, man. There are a lot of people out there who need a safe place more than ever. I'm just glad you and, uh, the black gooey thing... Venom. Venom are here. The city needs a hero. I didn't really feel like it, but I would try my best. On days 113 to 115, Zack told me a little bit more about Cletus Cassidy. Cletus was sent to jail after committing crimes that killed a bunch of people. He was scheduled to be transferred to a more secure prison, but on the way, there was an accident, and he escaped from the truck. He's been on the loose ever since. So where did all the crooks come from? Cletus has been friends with a mob boss named Derek Nim for years. When Cletus busted out, he went to Nim and they made a deal about taking over the city. Nim gets to proceed with business, and if anyone crosses him, he takes them to Cletus. So why is Cletus in charge and not Nim? People are way more scared of Cletus. Nim is just a suit. Cletus is actually, well, crazy. Makes sense. This all seemed like too much to handle. A mob boss and a murderer? I was way in over my head. On days 116 to 119, Zack and I saw an emergency flare go up in the sky. What in the world? Then we remembered. Anne grabbed flares before heading to the city. That must be her. We told Zack to go back to the factory and took off toward the flare and saw Anne on top of a building. She was with another girl with bright blue hair. Eddie! She waved her hands at us and we ran up to her. I was about to let Eddie take form when Anne yelled at me. We don't have time. We need to go now. Venom! I grabbed her and carried her down, going back up for the other girl right after. When I put both of them down, I led them back to the factory before I finally let Eddie take form and he led them inside through the secret door. He hugged Anne. I'm so glad you found us. Tell me what happened. Anne told us how the crooks had taken her somewhere, but she had no idea where she was because she was blindfolded. After a few days, they brought another girl. Anne could hear her crying occasionally. The crooks kept them prisoner, occasionally feeding them. She heard them talking about not giving them over to Cletus because they wanted the girls to join Nim's mob. How did you escape? The crooks untied us and were about to take us to Nim instead, but I managed to escape with the other girl and grab a flare in the process. We ran to the top of the building, hoping you would see. We looked at the other girl. She still looked scared out of her mind. What's your name? Maggie. Are you a monster like Cletus? No, we don't hurt people. Well, Venom eats people, but only the crooks. Maggie looked confused. So the black monster that morphs out of you is not related to the red monster that morphs out of Cletus? 
Now it was my turn to be confused. Red monster? Maggie nodded. There is a red monster that morphs out of Cletus. I saw it before I was captured. How is that possible? Venom? It must have been when Cletus was slashing at me. Part of my form detached and must have attached to Cletus. But he's a red symbiote. Is that bad? It's very bad. On days 120 to 122, we made some more improvements to the factory. Anne really liked the room we made for her and even gave Eddie a kiss on the cheek again. He seemed really happy to have her back. I was too. We went to our room to gather some things when Eddie started talking to me. Hey Venom, sorry for getting mad at you earlier. I know it must have been hard for you without all your strength. You did the best you could. I felt really happy he had said that. Then I felt our eyes leaking. It's okay to cry, buddy. I didn't realize it until now, but I was having a hard time. I wasn't nearly as strong as I was before, and I felt really upset I couldn't help more people. I used to be able to do everything. Now I felt a little useless. On days 123 to 126, we went out in the city to see if there were any more people that needed help. Most seemed to stay inside, but we thought we would check, just in case. We were going down an alleyway when we heard someone running behind us. We turned around to see a little kid. Please, mister, can you help us? He grabbed Eddie's hand and dragged him into a rundown apartment complex. There's some bad men trying to get into the house. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. We entered the dimly lit hall and went up the stairs. Sure enough, there was a group of crooks trying to break down the door. Hey, get away from there. The crooks looked at Eddie and sneered. What are you gonna do, tough guy? Eddie smiled, then let me take form. The crooks screamed as we charged. They got a few hits in, but we were able to easily defeat them. Yeah, take that! Then I felt a surge of power and I grew in size. I even gained some of my hearts back. I didn't feel so down on myself. I knew I would get my strength back. It would just take time. Are they gone? The little boy creeped up the stairs. I let Eddie take form. They're gone. You're safe to go inside. The kid knocked on the door and yelled for his mom. She opened the door and hugged her son. Thank you. Of course. If you want somewhere safer to stay, we have some room. The mother shook her head. I would, but my husband needs to stay here. He's very sick and all his medicine and machines are here. I understand. Let me at least help you here. We made a few improvements to the apartment so that it was safer for the little family. If you've liked what you've seen so far, you should subscribe. We love having you here on this journey with us. We made our way back to the factory feeling a little bit better about ourselves. On days 127 to 131, I heard a knock on my door. It was Maggie. I let her in. Hey Eddie, can I talk to you? Yeah, sure. What's up? I wanted to talk to you about Cletus. I think I know what could stop him. Really? Yeah. Before I was captured, I saw Cletus transform. But I also saw Nim use an electric weapon on someone, and Cletus freaked out. Why? He was partially in the way, and it hit him. It wasn't that bad, but he screamed and threatened to hurt Nim if he used it again. Sounds like he doesn't like electricity. Wait. What? I think he used that lightning weapon on us when I got into the city. It took out nearly all of Venom's health and threw us into a brick wall. Ouch. Tell me about it. We need to find that lightning weapon. He said he was going to keep it just in case. I don't think he'd keep it on him, but maybe close by. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was something. On days 132 to 135, I decided to scout the city to see where Cletus was hiding. I went back to the shop where Julie and Chris were. I asked about the electric weapon to see if they knew anything. Chris piped up. Its name is Bolt. Nim used to use it all the time before Cletus came into town, but not anymore. Word is that it can turn your bones to dust. Julie looked concerned that he knew all this information, but it was really helpful. Do you know where it could be? Well, I heard that Cletus took it and has it stashed somewhere safe. Or is it in a safe? I don't know, but my friend used the word safe. A safe? Interesting. But also a little discouraging. We were in a city after all. There had to be thousands of safes. Then out of nowhere, the door blew off its hinges and a bunch of crooks were waiting outside. Eddie let me take form and I tried to shield Julie and Chris while they ran back into the room for cover. Well, well, well. If it isn't my least favorite symbiote. I looked and saw Cletus, but then almost immediately, he turned into a large red version of, well, me. This is not good, Eddie. What is that? We are carnage, and we are in charge here. His crooks attacked me, but I was able to deal with them quickly. Carnage charged me, and he immediately got some hits in. He took me down to half of my health. Eddie! I saw Julie holding a rifle, and she started to shoot Carnage. 
He screamed in pain while we ran into the back of the store. Chris threw a smoke bomb, giving us a little bit of cover. We have an underground passage. Come on! We moved past the shelves together. I heard someone open a trap door, and we all dropped down into the sewer. The door closed, and we rushed away. We continued on for a little while until we reached a ladder up to the street. That was impressive. You never know who will come into the shop. You just have to be prepared. I'm sorry about your shop, but you should come and live with us. We can set up a shop there and you can be safe. They happily agreed and we made our way to the factory. On days 136 to 139, Julie and Chris moved into the factory. We set them up with some nice rooms and then worked on making them a little shop in the downstairs area. It was bigger, but didn't have nearly as much food in it. Zach was nice enough to find some for them, as well as some other things to sell. I know it's not exactly the same, but it's something for now. Then I got an idea. I told Julie and the others about a statue we could build to let people know that there was food and shelter here. We discussed it, and they agreed it was a great idea. We started gathering materials and went to work. Can you guess what it might be? Also, if you like what you see so far, be sure to like and subscribe. We would love for you to watch our next adventure. On days 140 to 143, Ann and Eddie chatted for a while about what our next move should be. Well, we need to find the safe that Bolt is hidden in. I wonder how we can find a safe in a big city like this. Someone must have heard something. I should go out and have a look. You mean we? No. You got kidnapped once and I couldn't protect you. Who knows what will happen if you go out there again? Eddie, I'm not going to live my life in fear because I was kidnapped once. I'm going with you. Have I told you how much I like Anne? Yes, you have. We all gathered some supplies and headed out to go look for a safe. On days 144 to 149, Anne and Eddie snuck around the city to see if we could gather more information on Bolt. We ran into a few people who were trying their best to hide. We invited some of them back to the base for safety. Some agreed, but some wanted to stay where they were. However, nobody seemed to know anything about the lightning weapon. This is getting to be a little hopeless. Somebody has to know something. Then, out of nowhere, a group of crooks came around the corner. We hid and listened to them talking. Yeah, but the boss doesn't have Bolt anymore, remember? Yeah, yeah, sure. The big boss man Cletus took it. I saw him go into the central tower with a big briefcase. The entire building is abandoned, except the top floor. That's where his safe house is. This was great information. Good thing I didn't eat those guys. We need to head to that tower. I nodded and we headed in that direction. We did our best to sneak past all the crooks on the way and managed to make it to the tower. It was a lot bigger than I had imagined. We should scale the side. You sure you want Venom to do that? Yes, it'll be the fastest. I morphed and then grabbed Anne as we scaled the side of the building. It was a long way up, but Anne didn't seem to mind. I managed to break through a window near the top and we all climbed through. I don't see anybody. Do you? Nope. We snuck around and sure enough, it seemed deserted. We entered a large room and saw a few crooks beating up a guy in the corner. Hey, you leave him alone! We charged and smacked the guys left and right. They didn't have any special weapons on them, so it was really easy to defeat them. Thank you. The guy that was beaten up didn't look so good and rushed over to him. We should get you some help. No, I'm fine. The guy tried to stand up on his own, but he immediately fell over. Yeah, sure you are. We escorted him to the hole we climbed in from. Anne helped him get on my back and I carried him down to the street. I climbed up to carry Anne down as well, and we helped him get back to the factory with us. Once we were safe back at the factory, we checked on his wounds and got to planning out a room for him to stay in. I hope you'll be okay. I'm sure he will. I wonder why the building was basically empty though. Those crooks said that was Cletus' hiding spot. It was. Uh -huh. Oh. The guy groaned. I've been sleeping behind the dumpster near the tower. I saw them all moving stuff out, so I figured it was safer than the street. Apparently not. We wanted to get him to rest as soon as possible. On days 150 to 153, we built a room for the guy. We knew he would be recovering for a while, so we wanted him to be as comfortable as possible. I'm Travis, by the way. We are Venom! I guess Gletus is like us, but he is not necessarily a nice symbiote. Yeah, I've seen him. He's pretty freaky. And strong. We'll get him, Travis. We have a plan. You do? Sort of. If the bolt wasn't in the tower, then it must be in a safe somewhere in the city. We got some information from a friend. A safe? Yeah, it's not a lot, but it's something. Well, best of luck to you, my friend. I'm in no condition to help with that, but I am happy to help around here. Everyone was put to work. Zach gathered the food, Travis worked on food prep, and Julie and Chris worked on stocking the store. Maggie and Anne welcomed new people in and set up areas for them to stay. It felt good to help. On days 154 to 157, we woke up Maggie pounding on our door. Come quick, Eddie. We followed her and we found everyone gathered around Zach. He didn't look too good. 
Zack, what happened? I went to gather some food this morning, but some other guys beat me up to get to it first. I guess one of them had a knife. Sure enough, Zack had a bad cut on his leg. This needs stronger medicine than we have right now. We'll go find some. There's a pharmacy in the abandoned grocery store about a mile away. I have a friend who crashes there sometimes. He might be able to help out, unless he got kicked out. We'll go look, buddy. You sit tight for now. Eddie and I snuck over to the grocery store, on the lookout for anything suspicious. We entered the front door, and the lights flickered. This is creepy. You are probably one of the creepiest things I've ever seen in my life. And you think a couple of lights flickering is creepy? Don't judge me. We continued back toward the pharmacy. The lights continued to flicker, and there was food all over the ground. What a mess. We made it back to the pharmacy, but it looked like it was locked. Go on, pick the lock. I reached out to try, but before I could, the door swung open, revealing a hobo. What you doing here? Zack sent us. He got attacked by a couple of guys and has a pretty nasty cut. He needs medicine. The guy nodded and closed the door. After a minute, he brought out some medicine and gauze. This should work. Tell Zack to take care. We offered to let him stay at the factory, but he said he was happy where he was. We made our way back to Zack with the medicine. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Of course. We can't have you risking your life for all of us to get food. Tell us where to go, and we can go instead. He reluctantly agreed, and we went out to gather some more food for our friends. On days 158 to 162, we worked to gather some food nearby and even invited a few more people back to the base. It looks like we need to expand. We worked on making some improvements and also worked on the statue for a little while. It was starting to come together. Hopefully, we could let everyone in the city know that they weren't alone. It was looking pretty good when all of a sudden we heard a loud bang. We hurried and ran down to the factory to see that it was on fire. Oh no! Eddie and I ran in and tried to gather all of our friends. They seemed fine, all except for Maggie. She coughed violently. Eddie, you need to stop Nim. Don't worry about that now, Maggie. We need to get you some help. No, you don't understand. <coughs> it was Nim that set the fire. I saw him outside the window and I tried to grab him, but he threw the explosive device in my room. I couldn't stop the fire. <coughs> she coughed again. She held out her hand. There was a key inside. I grabbed this from around his neck in the struggle. It might help you beat Cletus. She coughed again and then slumped over. She's gone. We all mourned our friend as the factory burned up around us. Eddie looked at the key. There seemed to be an address on it. Venom. I morphed and bared my teeth. We are Venom and we are going to avenge our friend. On days 163 to 166, I ran full speed to the address on the key. There was nothing, just a construction site. This can't be right, there's nothing here. We punched a building nearby and everything trembled. Then we saw a piece of rubble fall off the building. It looked like it was going to fall on a stack of crates, but then it disappeared. What in the world? We inched forward to the crates and saw a hole leading into the ground. This must be it. We started climbing down the ladder into a dark area. There was a light up ahead in the tunnel. We slowly crept toward it and realized that it was a subway station. Wow. There was an abandoned subway car sitting among some beams. What did I tell you, Nim? Stay away from the symbiote. I was going to take care of him myself. We saw Cletus in front of the car. He continued yelling. Seems like Nim's plan wasn't approved by Cletus. I don't care. Cletus is involved, so he is just as guilty of hurting Maggie as Nim is. I was about to charge forward when Eddie held us back. No, look. We saw Nim on the other side of the tunnel with a bunch of his crooks. Cletus looked very angry. What are you doing here? Nobody's supposed to know about this place. You think I'm a fool, Cletus? I found out about this place a long time ago. I'm sick of taking orders from you. I'm taking Bolt back, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Bolt is here. We need to get it before Nim does. Just wait a minute. Cletus began to form into carnage, and then Nim's guys began to shoot him. He screamed and attacked the crooks. While he was distracted, Nim ran to the subway car. He went to grab something from around his neck, then looked around in horror. Fall back! I don't have the key! He ran away, leaving his crooks to get eaten by carnage. Well, that was unexpected. Come on, let's go while he's distracted. We snuck around and went to the other side of the subway car. We took out the key, and sure enough, it opened the subway car. Nice! We snuck inside and looked around. There was a big safe sitting in the car. You don't suppose the key is the same for this, do you? I wouldn't count on it. We swung around to see Carnage, smiling a big toothy grin at us through the car window. Oh no! We ran outside, and as soon as we did, he charged and we attacked. He projected red spikes and they flew at us. Ouch! He kept shooting. Venom, we're gonna die if we stay. 
We hurried and ran out of the subway car, carnage chasing us. We ran up the darkened tunnel, avoiding the red spikes. The subway opened into a chasm, and we ran across the tracks. Venom! One spike struck us in the back, and we fell into the dark chasm, everything blacking out around us. On days 167 to 170, we woke up in darkness, floating in the water. Eddie had taken form. Jeez, I feel like garbage. How fitting, since we're floating in it. We looked around, and sure enough, we were standing in wrappers and bags and other debris. Yuck. We tried to follow the tunnel to where there was a very faint light. We finally reached some bars at the end of the tunnel. It looks like this leads out to the bay. We swam underneath the bars and emerged in the bay. Wait, we need to go back for Bolt. We went back to the address on the key and followed the tunnel down to the subway car. The safe was open, and it was empty. Figures, Cletus took it so that Nim couldn't get to it. I guess Nim didn't realize he had lost the key until it was too late. Poor planning on his part. You got that right, buddy. On days 171 to 174, we made our way back to the factory, or what was left of it. When we got back, though, we were surprised to see it all cleaned up and fixed. Eddie! Anne ran towards us and gave us a big hug. We've been working to fix the base and make some improvements. Do you like it? We looked around and it was amazing. She had even made a dining area and gotten some other decorations to make it more homey. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Anne. She looked really proud of herself, which she should. She took us to a couple of things that needed lifting and moving that she couldn't do herself. But besides that, it was perfect. Everyone else seemed really happy with how it turned out. We missed you, Eddie. Did you find Nim? Yeah, but he got away. His plan was to steal the lightning weapon, but Maggie foiled that. She's a hero. Zack nodded in agreement. So what's the plan now? I'm not sure. On days 175 to 178, we planted a garden in the back of the factory since everything was getting a bit too gray and red. We even made a basketball court so people could play and exercise. I went out to gather some more food since Zack was still not feeling well and I saw some crooks outside. That looks suspicious. They were holding weapons and guarding some sort of restaurant. Let's go check it out. I morphed and we charged the crooks. They shot, but we dodged them all. Before the crooks knew it, they were defeated and I had a full belly. Mmm, yum. We crept into the restaurant to see Nim trying to grab some people from the back. No, you don't. We charged and he started to shoot at us. This is for Maggie. He grazed us with a couple of bullets, but we didn't stand down. He seemed scared and tried to run into the kitchen. He let go of the people and they ran the other way. Coward! We smashed into the kitchen doors, throwing Nim back onto the floor. Let me go. I've done nothing wrong. That's a lie if I ever did hear one. We swallowed him in one big gulp. At least we don't have to worry about him anymore. Then all of a sudden, I felt my form start to surge with power, and I got bigger. I even gained the rest of my hearts back. Finally! Then my stomach started to rumble really loud. Uh, Venom? What is that? I don't know. Then I let out a huge belch, and something flew out of my mouth. Ah, gross, Venom. I couldn't help it. I looked at the item I had burped out, and it looked like a key card with a symbol on it. Hmm, this might be important. I don't recognize the symbol. Maybe someone at the factory will. On days 179 to 184, we went back to the factory with the key card. We showed it to a bunch of people, but nobody seemed to know what it was. Wait, let me look at it again. Travis looked at the key card closer. The ink is faded, but it looks familiar. What is it? There's a hospital on the north side of the city that has a symbol on the outside like this. That must be where it goes to. A hospital? I don't even want to know what Cletus is doing in a hospital. Same. Travis shuddered. But the keycard won't work anyway. What? Why do you say that? Part of the security strip is gone. It won't work unless you have that. It must have rubbed off when it was in my stomach. Um, what? Travis handed us the card back and wiped his hands on his shirt. Gross, my dude. But hey, I know someone who worked in the hospital. She could hook you up. On days 185 to 189, we went to the apartment that Travis told us about. We knocked on the door. A woman with glasses peeked her head out. What do you want? Are you Kai? Who is asking? We're a friend of Travis. He told us you worked at the hospital. Yeah, but Cletus and his goons kicked us all out a few days ago and made us move to the hospital on the southern side of the city. He made us all give up our key cards. My heart sank. But I kept a spare one, just in case. She closed the door and then came back a minute later with a key card. It was intact. Yes. If anyone asks, I didn't give it to you. Of course. Thank you. She nodded and closed the door. This was the big break we were looking for. We hurried back to the factory, a spring in our step. 
On days 190 to 194, we told everyone about the hospital, and they all agreed to help out to make sure the factory was ready, just in case there was an ambush again. We all gathered more people off the street and made them places to stay. While out, I made sure to fight off as many crooks as possible. I gathered food for later and even managed to find some chocolate in a nearby dumpster. Gross, Venom. You can't eat dumpster chocolate. Eddie, I literally eat people, and you think that dumpster chocolate is gross? Your priorities are not in the right order. Ah, shut it. I morphed out of him and slugged him in the shoulder, softly. Uh-huh, sure. Punch the guy who takes care of you. I patted him on the head instead. I think I preferred the punch. On days 195 to 197, we finished the statue. We stopped to look at it on the roof of the factory. It was pretty fantastic. Almost good enough to eat. Hey, Eddie. We turned and saw Anne. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. I don't know what I'd do without you. Yeah, Venom is pretty great. I'm not talking about Venom. I'm talking about you. Then she gave Eddie a kiss. But this time, it wasn't on the cheek. I felt his face get really, really red. But then he smiled really big. Have I told you how much I like you? On day 198, we traveled to the hospital with the key card in hand. It did look abandoned, just like Kai said, but there was one room that seemed to glow a bit ominously. I don't like that. Me neither, buddy. We swiped the key card, which opened up doors as we progressed inside. It was pretty dark as we made our way to the room with the light. The door was open, and we peeked inside. Is that? Oh no. Carnage stood with not one, but two other smaller symbiotes. I think we should retreat. It's too late for that. We flipped around to see another symbiote behind us. How many are there? The symbiote charged at us, and we had no choice but to run inside the room with all the other symbiotes. On day 199, we ran into the room with Carnage and his smaller symbiotes. You've met my children? Huh? Children? I looked closer and realized that all the other symbiotes were all just lighter shades of red. Eddie, this is not good. No duh, Venom. Now that you're here, we can make more of my followers. He held up a large knife with jagged edges. Then I noticed something sitting in the corner of the room. It was Bolt. Yes. This ends here, Carnage. We charged at him, but at the last second, we veered toward the corner. Stop him! The symbiotes ran after me, a few of them getting some swipes in. Luckily, they were smaller, so they didn't do nearly as much damage. I managed to grab the lightning weapon and shoot it at the first symbiote. It screamed for a moment, then exploded into a puddle. No! I aimed at the next symbiote, and just like its brother, it turned to goof. My children! I took aim at the last symbiote. It screamed in pain before exploding. How dare you! I was about to aim at Carnage when he shot his red spikes at us. I had to duck down, and before I knew it, Carnage was right in front of us. He knocked me away, and I lost grip on the lightning weapon. Die, you traitor! Then, I felt the puddles of the symbiote start to pull around me. They morphed into my form, making me grow larger with each one. What is happening? They are returning to their rightful place of origin, Carnage. I felt the symbiotes merge fully, and I grew into a huge venom with a long tongue and even bigger claws. No! I grabbed for the lightning weapon, but Carnage put up a fight. He tried to shoot it at me, but with my body's restored speed, I could easily avoid most of the electricity. I noticed he was getting more and more angry with each shot that I dodged. You won't win! Bolt will incinerate you! He suddenly shot a huge volley of red spikes all over the place. I lunged towards him, knocking the lightning weapon out of his hands. He reached for it, but I was faster. I snatched it off the floor and pointed it at him. Goodbye, Cletus. I pulled the trigger, the electricity pulsing through the lightning weapon into the red symbiote. He screamed and started melting into a red puddle on the floor before evaporating into a brilliant burst of light. On day 200, we returned triumphantly to the factory with Bolt waving above our head. Everyone cheered as we approached. It was good to know that the city would be safe again, free from monsters and criminals. Everyone insisted that we stay for a little while longer before heading back to our city. We agreed, happy to have another place to call home.